I knew a god once who kept the whole of the sky in a sweet tin on the windowsill beside the armchair that would prove a far greater memorial than any tombstone could. And he'd ask it questions like, where is the wind going? And why do we need carpets if we have grass? And how do sheep become clouds? And I never did find out what the answers were. Now this god had a son, and one year he trapped the son in a petrol canister, fed it to his motorbike, and launched an assault on roads, mountains, and clouds. He never quite lost the helmet lines, or the grin. The god of earth and sky would have hated the name. Staunch Irish Presbyterians, three-pointed sermons, triangular sandwiches, keen on the trinity. To them, God lived among the rafters, not the pews, and couldn't be this old man who, while watching the news, would lift still strong arms and start tapping a beat on the arms of his chair, while on the edge of his seat he would whistle tunes that have carried different meanings since the band's men took up arms. The God of Earth and Sky knew every hymn, up, down, and across, but no one ever wrote him one. At the service, we sang Abide in Me and ate triangular sandwiches. Afterwards, we climbed the hill we always did, opened the sweet tin, and flung the contents skywards. God made funeral confetti a real thing. The youngest cousins had these remote control helicopters and they chased the sky bits up and up until the batteries died and they drifted back to earth like God's last gifts. After all, it was Christmas. So when I get the chance, I go home, pull on God's old green wellies and climb the hill, mud to my ankles. There's a grave somewhere, but this dirt feels holier than any cold stone could. I drink tea with the hills and tell the sky the same jokes he always did. It it doesn't usually laugh. I'm probably not telling them right. And when it gets dark, I descend, vault the gate like Dad taught me, and head for the lights of home. And I hope and pray to the rain and the dirt that the Pantheon is real.